Today we're going to have a conversation dealing with Nintendo and their next platform Nintendo Switch 2 and even the current platform Nintendo Switch because there seems to be prevailing thoughts as there are every time we're entering a transition period into a new system for Nintendo that not only is Nintendo going to drop the ball, that Nintendo of today is actually a really crappy company making tons of anti-consumer moves, which we'll talk about that because yes, Nintendo has made anti-consumer moves as has Sony and Microsoft and Valve and pretty much any for-profit business. But yes, Nintendo has made them, and I don't live in that denial. I don't feel like Nintendo as a company needs a strong defense force for really anything. They're a multi-billion dollar company that's doing very well for itself and in the midst of its best single platform generation of all time. And I say that even if Switch doesn't surpass the Nintendo DS in sales because it's already crushed it in software sales. So yeah, it's the most successful individual platform Nintendo's ever had. And they're in the midst of some of the most success they've ever had as a company. They had a billion dollar Mario movie this year, just in theaters, not counting any actual at home sales of digital or physical. And yeah, they're having very successful theme park launches as well. So Nintendo's in a very healthy place. I don't need to defend a multi-billion dollar corporation. But what I do want to talk about is this notion that seems to always come up as we approach switching over to new generation, that the current generation is not that good, and now in hindsight, a bad generation. And this notion that Nintendo can't repeat what they just did with their success, and that they hold gaming back, and that they are in general a problem, and maybe should even go third party, I find all these arguments to sort of fall flat on their face, and it does dive a little bit into fanboy wars, right? You know, the people who truly care about this stuff tend to be those that are mega fans of another company. And look, make no mistake, I love Switch. Uh, I don't really have it down here right now. It's actually up in my room because that's where I usually play it. But if you look behind me, there's a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series S. So I play other things on other platforms, including PC. So I try to dabble in everything because I want to stay as up-to-date on gaming as I can and not just be like, oh, I'm a Nintendo YouTuber, so that's what my focus is going to be. I do feel like it's good to you know see what's going on in the rest of the industry. Now, before we dive deeper, I am on my road to 150,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate if you would just subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and maybe ring -a -ling that ding -a -ling so we can get notified, or you can be notified, I guess, of every video that I upload. Now, let's look at this from another perspective. There are lots of videos like this, and I'm just going to throw one example out there, and I want to just note, this is no shade to any YouTuber out there. I am not trying to bash them or throw them under a bus. It's just using, you know, fellow content creators, I just think provides a bit more context than just grabbing random fan comments from a bunch of no names that aren't on camera. So as an example, we have a video today from Review Tech USA. Some people call him my dad, a little weird. We're around the same age. Anyways, we desperately need a next gen Nintendo Switch. And you can see it's got the Metal Gear Solid collection in the title. And look, I understand that that collection is, uh, you know, kind of a mess on Switch. It's at 30 FPS when it should be at 60 FPS. But if the argument being made, and again, I didn't watch his video, but I'm assuming he's going to bring up the Metal Gear Solid collection because, again, it's in the damn video thumbnail. Well, that's a really bad argument because every single Metal Gear Solid game in that collection released originally on worse hardware than the Nintendo Switch. That kind of means the Nintendo Switch hardware isn't the problem. It's the lack of effort on the part of the developers porting the games to bring it in 60 FPS. I'm sorry, the Nintendo Switch is twice as powerful, twice as powerful as the most up-to-date Metal Gear game on there and the system it released on. Yeah, it can run at 60 FPS. It's just a lack of effort. But, you know, it's running at 60 FPS on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Sure. Of course it is, because those systems are overpowered. They just ported it and did it at 60 FPS with no effort. It's no effort to just overpower things. This is what happens with emulation. No effort if you're running a souped-up system compared to the original. Would the Switch version need a little bit, a little bit of effort to hit 60 FPS? Yes. Is it somehow the hardware's fault? No, because it's already significantly more powerful than that entire collection's library of original releases. And guess what? It's not a remaster. They're just all ports. 
They're just a bunch of ports. It makes no sense. So this is where I sit back, and this is just one of many examples where people are choosing to go after Nintendo or go after the Nintendo Switch and talk about graphics or talk about frame rates, talk about how their games are somehow not high quality. Um, Pikmin 4, last I checked, had the same review scores as Final Fantasy 16 this year, a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Need we talk about Tears of the Kingdom being tied with Baldur's Gate 3 for the top review score of the entire year? So those are just two games released this year, and we still have Mario Wonder and obviously Mario RPG coming back as well. So we have a solid slate of games from Nintendo. Maybe not their greatest year of releases ever, but still a pretty good slate, and that's not even talk about Fire Emblem Engage that released back in January. Uh, and, I mean, you look, you bring up Kirby and Advance Wars if you guys want. I don't know that those are as big of a deal. But in Origins, though, was at least a brand new game but the point is i don't know why nintendo seems to be uniquely attacked in the way that it is consistently and i'm not trying to argue that playstation and xbox fans don't go at each other's throats of course they do there's a lot of e peening out there a lot of uh you know cer certain <laughs> measuring contests going on that lead to shall we say uh interpretations of things that just aren't true uh, is the Xbox Series S really holding back everything? Well, according to Phil Spencer, he said they don't have any such policy anymore that things need to have parity between S and X. Now, they did have that at one point, but basically, we're not getting Bulgars Gate 3 coming to Xbox this year. There just won't be split-screen multiplayer on the Xbox Series S, but it will be available to play on there. And this is like a really big move for Microsoft, basically saying, you know, look, games don't need to be parity between S and X. That's awesome, actually. That's actually good news for third-party developers. And uh, this isn't to say all those developers that have been complaining about it are wrong. It's to say, well, if there was a policy change from Microsoft, it's certainly not available in the documentation, which still has the old policy. And it's probably something Phil Spencer just decided quite recently due to Baldur's Gate 3. So I would expect documentation updates soon and then third parties being very, very happy with this change. But when we look to Nintendo, it's interesting thinking about the Nintendo Switch. It is using old technology. It's from 2015. But at the time that it came out, even in 2017, early 2017, it still was the best dedicated mobile gaming chip that there was outside of dedicated full-size laptops, right? Like obviously, laptops are just significantly larger and aren't meant to be held in your hand, hence the term lap top right so it was interesting at the time that nintendo actually had a fairly powerful handheld system that looked pretty decent when docked on your tv and when we talk about the future of nintendo and what's going to happen with nintendo switch 2 when i talk about how you know the specs of this next system look like they're probably going to be on par with a playstation 4 or a playstation 4 pro well docked and then they also have the addition of dlss at least dlss 2.0 oh and by the way FSR as well that we can't ignore. Yeah, Nintendo internally used FSR 1.0, but guess what game just released an update on Switch using FSR 2.0? No Man's Sky. So we can't forget that even with the LSS, the latest FSR technologies can also actually work on this hardware and especially on the upcoming hardware for Nintendo. And people tend to forget that whatever Nintendo releases is going to be much newer from a technological perspective than what PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X put out in 2020. And when I say newer, it's because the tech they were using, while quote-unquote new at the time, was actually sort of developed the year before. And this is stuff that, according to all the leaks from NVIDIA and the stolen data, which it's really, you know, I do feel bad for NVIDIA that that leak even happened, it's very obvious the new chip heading into Nintendo Switch 2 is using newer technology than what's in these systems. So there's going to be technological advantages from that as well that so far developers mostly take advantage on the PC side of things more so than the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So the Switch 2 is going to punch above its weight and it's going to do quite well. Remember when we talked about how Doom Eternal is an impossible port? Doom 2016, impossible port. The Witcher 3, an impossible port. Well, now imagine Call of Duty running at 60 FPS on the next Switch and looking almost as damn good as the PlayStation 5 version thanks to DLSS or FSR techniques on your 4K TV. Just imagine a world where you actually are getting cross-gen gaming between all these games on other platforms because Nintendo Switch can actually carry its own weight. And no, I'm not foolish. 
Nintendo Switch isn't about to be a 10 or 12 teraflop system. But if you think teraflops are all that matter, I really encourage you to go watch this Digital Foundry video where they finally dive into the nitty gritty about teraflops and how it's really not a great measurement of performance or even theoretical performance. So yeah, well, Nintendo Switch might, you know, well docked top out at three to four teraflops of performance. That's not really an apples to apples comparison to the 10 to 12 teraflops on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It's just not a apples to apples comparison. They're using completely different technologies with completely different techniques. And really, as long as Nintendo doesn't skimp on something like RAM, I think everything's going to be okay. Now, I am worried because Nintendo does tend to skimp on RAM. If they only go with eight gigabytes of RAM when they could easily go with 12 or 16, yeah, that's going to be a problem. And it's fine to have concerns that Nintendo's going to fumble this transition in some way and deliver a half measure system instead of a full gen upgrade. But I pause at you to say that these concerns are premature. We're talking about a hypothetical next generation Nintendo system that Nintendo has only confirmed exists, but hasn't actually said anything publicly about it yet. It hasn't really been announced. Now, once it's announced, if you want to fear monger, if you want to trash it because you're worried it, it's going to ruin your precious Steam Deck and outperform it, or it's going to you know, make the Xbox Series S maybe not look as great because look at this. It has like that sort of power, but it's on the go. Yeah, it, it, it's something that I can see a lot of fanboys latching onto. But Nintendo isn't holding back gaming. All Nintendo is doing is offering an alternative way to enjoy video games outside of this typical spectrum that we've been locked into for 30 plus years. Nintendo is just saying, hey, you don't need to be locked to your TV and you don't need to be locked to being on the same Wi-Fi network as your system. Hello, PlayStation. What are they calling that thing now? It was Project Q. Now it's got some other name and it's $200. I don't know. It just does not look appealing to me at all. And highly doubt when I'm on hotel Wi-Fi, I'm suddenly going to connect to my PS5 and get a really great gaming experience. I, yeah, I got, I've got a lot of suspicion that it's not really any better than it was when they tried to do this with the Vita. But what I am going to just note is that Nintendo is in a healthy place, releasing more games than ever. And I, I think what frustrates me is I saw a video, again, I don't want to call out this content creator, especially because they're much smaller and I don't want a bunch of hate going their way. Uh, but they made a video where they talked about how Nintendo has lost out on its creativity. And they, they, they are very nitpicky and picking very specific things they love from, say, the GameCube era, and then nitpicking that similar franchises on Switch aren't as innovative or even the same franchises. They'll, they'll, they'll compare something like Paper Mario and the Origami King to Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, but yet they'll ignore all the games that happened in between that actually led to Origami King being a better than expected Paper Mario game because Paper Mario has fundamentally changed since the GameCube days. And they'll talk about all the lack of creativity, all oh, the port of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe instead of a new one, but they'll ignore the massive creativity shown in Breath of the Wild and in Tears of the Kingdom. Or they'll, they'll talk about the water jet ability and how creative and inventive that was back in the day for Mario on the GameCube, but then they'll ignore that, hey, Cappy is just as an inventive of a mechanic where you literally take control of dinosaurs and other beings in the world to do things that Mario has never been able to do before. It's just as inventive of an ability, but you don't want to give it credit because you feel slighted because you have a lot of nostalgia for a certain era. So this also goes out to some Nintendo fans that also feel a bit slighted at times because we have a lot of fond memories from when we're a kid. And I want to just note, you're, if, you, if you're like me and you're an adult, you're never going to be a kid again. We can keep the kid at heart. We can still act silly and have fun and have a good time and laugh together when we're live streaming and have all that good stuff. But bottom line is you're never going to be a kid again. And the things you experience as a kid can never be replaced because those things help shape who you are today. And we are 
it's much harder to change who you are today than it was when you were heavily influenced as a child. So video games today can be even more inventive but have less of an impact on you because you're not a kid and you're not as impressionable as a young child is. So sometimes we let games that, yes, are very, very good games in their own right from our childhood cloud our judgment on what's happening today. Is Zelda any less inventive today than when it, the Wind Waker came out on GameCube? Hell no. Hell no, it's not less inventive. Is Mario less inventive today with games like Mario Wonder and, you know, things like, uh, you know, Mario Odyssey compared to back in the day? Hell no. Of course not. Is Animal Crossing less inventive today than it was on the GameCube? No. Nintendo even still does new IPs and ARMS and, oh my gosh, Astral Chain. Nintendo owns that IP. That is a owned IP by Nintendo. Brand new that came out this generation. Very very inventive. Very inventive. Is Xenoblade Chronicles 3 not showing massive, inventive new changes from the original Xenoblade back on Wii? Of course it did. And of course it has. And of course there's been evolutions along the way. How about, you know, if you're going to talk about Donkey Kong and porting Donkey Kong and, and just there's no new Donkey Kong. Well, what about the fact they took Kirby into 3D platforming? The same thing you praised them doing with Donkey Kong back in the day. They did it with Kirby. Sometimes we just have this nostalgic outlook for the past that will never, ever be able to be replaced. And we need to be able to look beyond that to see what's going on today. So all of that is to say, welcome to Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about the future of Nintendo in the present and in, well, the future. And, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about these conversation points I brought up? Did, did I make good points or am I just talking to talk and said a bunch of irrelevant crap. You guys let me know. I'll catch you in the next video.